Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to present to you today uh, our new products based on new metal carboxylate technology. What I will present to you is why we developed this technology, the technology and the products behind it, what we're looking for in the future, and obviously some summary and conclusions from there. I'm sure you are all aware of the potential cobalt legislation toxicology issue. Recently, the members of the Cobalt Reach Consortium uh, agreed to self-classify these five cobalt compounds as repo tox category two. Obviously, from a dryer's perspective, we're looking mainly at the cobalt bis to ethyl hexanoate. The reclassification means that we have a new risk phrase, H361, and this gives a new pictogram on the MSDS and the labels. So the new phrase, suspected of damaging fertility of the unborn child, and this nice uh, new pictogram. Now, at greater than 3%, uh, this will probably not have any impact on a finished coating, but it does obviously have an impact in, from our perspective as a manufacturer and supplier. So we're looking at cobalt alternatives. Jura Chemicals has been working for many years to develop new effective cobalt alternatives. And the result of that has been a number of new products which have been in the marketplace now. They work, they are, have their positives, some negatives, but you never rest on what you have. So through continuous development, we now have a new range of even more effective materials, which we have called the DryCat 2700F series. DryCat 2700F series say, is a new technology. Uh, highly efficient free radical based materials give the oxidative drying of water and solvent based uh, alkyd formulated coatings. What these give you is a superior performance. You balance the products with the other co-dryers and you can expect to see a longer wet edge particularly significant for water-based systems, exceptional whiteness, superior long-term colour retention, improved loss of dry, better gloss control, better hardness development, and as a result of all that, also better durability. For solvent bond coatings, we have three products. 2700F itself, which is based on manganese, 2710F, which is iron-based, and then a blend of the two for the 2720. For the maximum performance, we say combine them with calcium, zirconium, strontium, or cerium from our range. For waterborne, obviously the same metals. We have the 2705, 2715, 2725, and this time, combined with lithium and zirconium. So actual products in the market. The series is called the 2700F series, but 2700F is actually a product in its own right. And it was the first material developed and is now being sold in commercial volumes. 2705FW was a later development where we spe specifically focused on water-based systems, and again, this is now a fully commercialized product. 2710, 2715, 20, and 25 are much more recent developments because these offer alternative cure profiles, uh, and maybe it's in an advantage for different systems. So what should you choose, manganese or iron? If we can compare it against cobalt, Manganese, generally, will give you a slightly slower touch dry, but it gives you a faster through and hard dry. Iron is the opposite. So the iron manganese blend, designed to try and give the best balance of both metals. 
But then it's the question, which product for which coating? Show you some examples of some comparative work where calcium and zirconium were used as the co dryers. In these tests, no optimization was made to improve the drying in any way. So, cobalt as a standard, we can see that the manganese is slightly slower initially, but then speeds up through the through and hard dry. Iron on its own is faster initially but then much slower. And then with this blend of the 2720, we are trying to find a balance which is a little bit closer to the cobalt. Similarly for waterborne, with the lithium and the zirconium. Cobalt, obviously very fast initially. The 2705 FW, definitely a bit slower at the start. And this is where the advantage comes in. And it gives you that longer wet edge. And then it's much faster for the through and hard dry. The iron, it's even faster, so it's actually much more of a problem. So, and then we don't really see much of a through and hard dry because it's closed the surface too fast and we can't really process the material as best we like. The 2725, again, is a balance which is an improvement in terms of the cobalt, in terms of wet edge but not quite the same as the, 20, the, the 05 itself. And talk about optimizing the formulations. To get the maximum benefit from these materials, it is important to find the right balance with the co-dryers. And this is what we always stress. Balance is the key. You go from one system to another, you make small adjustments to the calcium, zirconium, whatever dryers you may use together, then you can make significant changes to the performance of your system. As I said before, 2700 F series for solvent, combine with calcium, zirconium, cerium or strontium. Vary the loadings according to the oil length, the oil type, application area, and obviously the required performance. Also works with MECO and with MECO alternatives. 2705 FW series for the water. As I said before, these are designed for water miscibility. Makes them easier to use, makes them more effective. In this case, we have lithium and zirconium, and they're used to provide extra uh, good through and hard dry. Generally, we don't recommend calcium because calcium doesn't like water. It can precipitate, flocculate, cause gelation, and generally give you incompatibilities. So we recommend, obviously, the 2700 series as cobalt alternatives. What happens if it doesn't quite give you the performance? Rather than just changing the, that addition rate, we say, first adjust your auxiliary dryer, especially the calcium. Small changes in the calcium level can have significant effects in the overall drying performance. Then look at the through dryer. Again, particularly significant for VOC compliance systems. Lastly, then look at the primary dryer. Need be? we can give quite detailed guidance uh, for different systems. Mentioned earlier about superior performance. Uh, obviously, you mentioned manganese. People immediately think about yellowing. Uh, with our products, that doesn't happen. Compared to the cobalt and other cobalt alternatives, with the 2700 series, you see a visible improvement in the initial and long-term color performance, especially the dark yellowing. So initially, you can expect to see higher whiteness. Over the short term, even with cobalt, you don't see much of a change. But then longer term, you start to see a significant drop for the cobalt, and it's much less with the 2700. In terms of yellowing, it's almost in reverse. So we have uh, the 2700 
gives you a slightly more blue starting coating. Then the cobalt yellows dramatically and the 2700 to a much lesser extent. Because the products that we have are so highly complex, it is very difficult for them to then complex further with other materials. So loss of dry, particularly with pigments, uh, is vastly improved. Carbon black, as we know, is particularly notorious. So initially with cobalt, you can get good drying. Then over time on storage, as the cobalt as, and zirconium and calcium are absorbed, you see a significant loss of the drying uh, time. With the 2700, you will see some loss. We won't say that you will, it will always stay the same because uh, calcium and zirconium will still be absorbed. But the 2700 itself is less likely to be absorbed into the system. So you do see this vast improvement in terms of the performance over time. Similarly with water. Cobalt is easily hydrolyzed by water. 2700 uh, manganese type complexes aren't. So again, where you see this initial loss of performance that you have with cobalt, you see some changes again with the 2705 because there are interactions of the water with the zirconium with the lithium. So the system changes its balance slightly, but over time, it's a significant improvement. To summarize, 2700 series, a range of commercial and newly developed products. It's based on new technology, but it's still working in a very traditional way. Very low metal concentrations, very high activity products. Make sure you get that balance with the co-dryers and the anti-skinning agents. Because once that balance is achieved and the drying is right, then all of the other properties fall into place nicely. So as I say, get the drying right, then all of these longer wet edge, the whiteness, the long-term color performance, the improved loss of dry, the gloss control, the hardness development, and the durability, they are all linked to having that right drying uh, process. Where do we go in the future? I've obviously spoken about iron and manganese, but in principle, we can extend this technology to just about any metal. So heavy metals, uh, metals with more than one oxidative state are of particular interest. So copper, bismuth, uh, platinum, and nickel are materials which we've already looked at, uh, and they are probably going to be some of the next ones that come along. Obviously, we can blend metals together as well. How can we increase the activity further? Uh, we already have a very high activity product. If we can get more out of the system, then the better. Then obviously, we can then think about different market applications. I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you for listening.